what I'm showing is a person, you know, walking away from the truck. We have the person bounding box. We have the truck bounding box. And then the top right here, we're looking at that 3D distance between the objects. And we're seeing as, you know, as would make sense to you and me, they're getting further away as the person walks towards the camera. Typically in computer vision problems, we like to set up the camera view. So we have an overhead view like we have here, especially in scene understanding. Here we can see clear separation in distance between certain objects, the people, the forklift, and the zone. We can clearly see exactly where in space and how far apart these objects are from each other. And then we can make calculations how far apart are these objects when we're determining are they getting too close together, for example, with a safety use case like how close are, is the person to the forklift? Is it a dangerous situation? So this is, this is going to be the perfect situation for us with regards to the camera angle. Now, oftentimes we don't have the luxury of that camera angle. We can see here, we have an outdoor camera. It is attached to a building or a chassis. And then it's looking outwards at this gentleman in this truck right here. Using RoboFlow, we can create a model that's going to detect the person and the truck. We can look at certain characteristics of these detections, like the center point that I'm looking as I'm looking at here, and we can calculate the 2D distance, you know, between these points. We could say how many pixels this is. We can make, we can even make certain assumptions about how tall that person is in real life, and then relate those pixels to real measurement numbers like meters or feet or you know, anything like that. We can also say that these objects are overlapping and that could give us an idea of how close together they are. But person like you or me, you know, we know that these objects actually aren't too close together. And that's because we have uh, the luxury of depth from, from our eyes and our brains. We can make out that, you know, there's a certain amount of distance between these objects because due to depth. So what I'm introducing today is depth estimation through RoboFlow. And essentially what we can do is take our detections in the 2D space and then overlay a depth map as we are looking at here, which will give us pixel values or, or values for every pixel that are going to tell us what is the depth at that point in space. And then when that, what that can enable us to do is instead of saying that these objects are a certain amount of pixels away or distance away in 2D space, we could say, oh, in 3D space, this is the distance between these objects. And that is going to give us some much richer information and really some more truthful information about the distance between these objects, which is relevant for safety. It's, it's relevant for just general scene understanding. So with that being said, let's get into a little bit of the background on AI depth estimation. Through RoboFlow, we're deploying depth anything V2. This is a state-of-the-art mon monocular depth estimation model. What this means is that all the model needs to see is a 3D image or a three-dimensional as in like RGB image from any type of camera. You know, it could be a machine vision camera. It could be your iPhone. Just really, it, it really just takes in one image. And from that, it can produce a depth map. And with that, the fourth dimension, the depth dimension that really takes these images and translates them into a way that us humans can perceive them so that we can get richer information as I showed before. So very high level, how this model was trained. The creators of the model took a small set of very carefully labeled 3D images with, so, so it had the basic RGB, but then they also add depth information on top of that. And then combined that with a very large set of real world unlabeled data, and then gradually the model learned and learned a vast generalization, you know, vast variety of scenes so that it could achieve a level of generalization and perform quite well. Outdoor scenes, indoor scenes, a vast variety of scenes. And you can see here, the real improvement it made over previous iterations of depth estimation models is the fine grained details. We are doing a much better job of separating very complex structures like the spokes on this Ferris wheel, we could really make them out now with depth anything v V2, while previously we would just say like, there's a pretty large object here. Same thing with the basketball net. And we can also see with this large landscape scene with buildings in the background, we can make out the details 
of the buildings with greater detail farther away from the camera or, or deeper into the, the camera view. Finally, it's, it's a fast model that can be used for real-time or near real-time applications with the right deployment. So that, that's important too. How is this model actually used in, in real world applications? Let's go through a few here. So first 3D reconstruction, taking two dimensional images and then showing them in 3D. This can be really important for architecture use cases, archeology. span It can be really important for virtual reality, augmented reality, taking in 2D images and then showing them in 3D for, for the user. Also for construction, seeing how like a building is being improved in real time, we can still, we can understand that from a depth point of view. It gives us richer information rather than just the, the two dimensional space. For, na for navigation and logistics use cases, robots, as they move around, they need to know if they're gonna run into a wall or a person or just any type of object. Having that sense of depth is really important. Now, you know, we'll commonly use other sensors like LiDAR or, mon or stereo depth for this task. But with, with this model, you know, we just need that to, we just need that normal image from camera. So this could really help augment that and then give robots, drones, the sense of depth. Autonomous driving. So we're seeing this get rolled out a bunch with LiDAR cameras so that um, cars can know if they're getting too close to a pedestrian or a barrier or, you know, curb, anything that the car needs to know to stop. This is very important, but with a purely visual system, we can combine the depth, anything, the depth, anything model with object detection and different computer vision models to provide that same sense. Scene understanding, which I'm going to get a little, which I'm getting into with my example today, just general spatial awareness, knowing when two objects are getting too close to each other. As I showed with 2D, it's not quite adequate because we don't have that, that sense of depth to know truly how far objects are away from each other. And then finally with robotics, for a robot to actually pick up and grasp an object, it needs to know how far away it is from that object. So, I mean, that's just a key variable for those applica that application and for, for many different tasks like automated picking in a warehouse and logi different logistics use cases. So let's jump into how we can actually use depth estimation in RoboFlow. So we've introduced a depth estimation workflow block, and I'm going to get into an example with a workflow I built. Also get into a little bit of what workflows are in general, and then we can see how to actually build a scene understanding application as I showed at the start of the presentation with, with RoboFlow. So here is my workflow from a high level, but I'm going to actually hop out of the presentation and go into RoboFlow and walk through this, this workflow in detail. So workflows as a tool we have in RoboFlow where we can take in any type of image input or a stream input. So we, or so a collection of images and we can pass them through different blocks and blocks can be, they can be pre-processing blocks as we're seeing here. They can be model blocks where we're actually running inference on a model. They can be post-processing blocks. Really what it does is it provides a very agile playground for us to put together different computer vision operations and really create a customized pipeline. And finally, we have our output, which can be defined from within the block. So any type of operation we're doing on our image or the, the previous step if we're pre-processing our image, we can reference the output of any of these blocks um, and then return it as a response. And what this will then, the, the, final, the final output of this is basically an API where you can ping your RoboFlow workflow and then get your response for uh, deployment on a video, on, a, on an image, on a collection of images, uh, on an RTSP stream. But what's awesome is if you make a change from within the workflow, the, the API will, will remain the same. So you have a basically like a customized playground here to create any type of computer vision pipeline you want. And I'm going to walk through here how to create a pipeline with depth estimation, starting from the beginning with our inputs. So here we have an image input. This is just the image I'm feeding into the model. We, you know, we can also provide parameters, but for here, we're just doing an image. Here I am resizing the image by a factor of two. This enables my depth estimation model to, to run faster. And it also enables faster inference of my object detection model. 
So next we're taking our resized image and passing it into the depth estimation block. The only thing you need to define here is a model version. And at the moment we are only supporting the small version of depth anything v2. So there's really, there's really nothing to define here. We're just passing in our image to get that depth map from our block here. At the same time, while I'm passing my image to depth estimation in parallel, I'm also passing it to an object detection model where I am going to detect that person and the truck. Now where the real magic happens is in this customized Python block here, where I'm passing in my depth estimation, depth, my depth map from that depth, depth estimation block and the, uh, the, ob the object detection predictions I'm getting from my model here. And here in a custom Python block, I can create a customized Python function that's going to take in both of these results with some assumptions about my scene. We're looking at the minimum depth. So I know I can, I can make the assumption from looking at my image that the closest thing we're seeing is about 0.5 meters away. And then the maximum depth, the furthest thing we're seeing in our image, what corresponds to the, the smallest value in the depth anything V2 response is going to be 15 meters. And then finally, the field of view. This is used to calculate my focal length, which I will then use to basically translate from camera coordinates to real coordinates. And then I also have a customized Python block for calculating pixel distance. This is showing what we had before with just the object detection model. And here I'm just defining two classes and then finding the distance in pixels between both of those objects. So the person object and the, the truck object. What workflows also enables us to do is create really cool visualizations from our blocks, our previous blocks. So here I am visualizing the bounding boxes from the objects I'm finding in my object detection model, but the image I'm, I'm visualizing them on is the depth estimation image. So that is a, the depth map that this block here provides. And then finally we have the label visualization. So this is just, this is just putting the labels of each object onto those bounding boxes. And then we can define our outputs. So this is what we want when we deploy our workflow. These are the pieces of information we want to gather from this workflow. So we have the 3D distance from this block here. We have the pixel distance from the calculated pixel distance block here. We have our model predictions from our object detection model. And then the output image, which is coming from our label visualization, which also has the bounding box, the bounding boxes from the bounding box visualization, which incorporates the depth map. So let's, now that we've gone through the, how the workflow works, let's go back to the slideshow and put it all together. So once we, when we run that workflow in a, over a video in Python, we can take those outputs that we've created from the workflow and create a visualization here. So what I'm showing is a person, you know, walking away from the truck. We have the person bounding box. We have the truck bounding box. And then the top right here, we're looking at that 3D distance between the objects. And we're seeing as, you know, as would make sense to you and me, they're getting further away as the person walks towards the camera. We can see the meters going from around four meters to around eight meters. It gets a little bit tricky as the person goes over the truck but we can see that signal with the pixel distance. We see actually it getting a little bit closer as the person walks over the truck because the centers of both objects are getting closer together. So we can really see here how, how this depth estimation block improves our scene understanding and gives us a richer output for the use case of understanding how close is this person to the truck with safety, I think really being the primary concern here, but just general scene understanding, general understanding of where objects are in relation to each other.